Are you in the market for a thermal camera that you can use for diagnosing logic board issues like a short on the motherboard? If so, I have three C cameras here that we can compare. The C Compact, Compact XR, and Compact Pro. All these come in at different price points. So let's see how they compare to each other so you can make an informed decision on which one you should buy. Hi, I'm Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the channel. Make sure you smash that like button if you like tool review videos, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this, and share this video with all your friends. Make sure you check out the video description down below because that will link to everything you see here today. The cameras, the seek stand, the macro lens, everything you need to get started with finding shorts. So let's go ahead and get started with the seek camera showdown. In today's video, we're just going to cover the iOS versions. These have the lightning port for iPhone and iPads, just because that's what I use the most. But there are USB-C and micro USB versions, which are virtually the same device. They just work with Android phones. So let's go over each model's pricing and specs to see what the differences are. The C Compact is the least expensive of the three, and it's currently selling for about $250 on Amazon. The resolution is at 206 by 156, a 36 degree field of view and has a viewing distance of a thousand feet. Now for our use case for smartphone repair, the viewing distance probably doesn't matter, but it's there in the specs. Then we have the Compact XR at 297. It has the same resolution of 206 by 156, but it has a more narrow viewing angle of 20 degrees and a viewing distance of 1800 feet. Then we have the Compact Pro, which is the one I use and you've seen in previous YouTube videos. It sells for about 458 as of today, and it has a higher resolution of 320 by 240, a viewing angle of 32 degrees, and 1800 feet viewing distance. One tip I would give you guys is when you're browsing on Amazon for these cameras, scroll down a little bit where the price is and you'll find a super discounted Seek camera because they're either used or open box. The one I personally bought, I saved about $50 because I bought a used one. For example, right now, as of this recording, there's one for sale for 307, so that's a huge savings. Same goes for the other two models. Remember, the camera just has to work, it doesn't have to look pretty, and there's nothing else in the box that you need. So don't worry about buying a brand new unit. In summary, the Compact is the lowest price of the three. The XR is the same, but it has a longer viewing distance but it probably doesn't really matter for us. And then there's the Compact Pro. It has a higher resolution, but it also comes with a higher price tag. So let's go ahead and test these out in a real world scenario. So here's the Seek Compact with an iPhone 8 Plus with the short on BDD main. As you can see, you can move the camera up and it gets into focus. The view is a little blurry, but it's pretty clear that there's a hotspot here on the motherboard. If you change the view, you can definitely see that hotspot right there. And we're currently maybe about three, four inches away from the motherboard. Now let's connect the macro lens to the camera to see how there's a difference in the quality. So now I've installed the macro lens and with the macro lens, you have to move the camera a lot closer. And look at that, you can actually see the components a lot clearer now that we're a lot closer to the motherboard. So this actually looks really good compared to without a macro lens, you can actually see which specific component is heating up. See there's a capacitor right here that's heating up. So I think based on what I'm seeing right now, this quality is really good. Even it being the lower end, it seems like the solution is here. Like the quality is a little blurry, but you can see the components and that's really all that matters. What matters here is that you can spot the heat source, which is usually a shorted capacitor or IC. And in this case, you can see it's actually uh, picking it up. So if you get the compact with the macro lens, this might be more than enough for you to use it to find shorts. So now we're gonna swap out this camera for the Compact XR. Let's see if we can spot a difference. So install it, plug it in. 
Okay, so right now you can see a hot spot, but you can't really define what that is. It's just a really blurry heat spot. If I move the camera all the way up, it does get better at being in focus, but you still can't really like visually tell what it is. Now, if I raise it up, I can definitely see the board. I can see the hot spot, but this is not practical. But let's try out the macro lens and see if this improves. Okay, so with the macro lens, you always want to move up closer and see how everything looks. And look at that. Now that we're closer, we could actually see the actual components. And if I turn this on, you can see there's a short. At this point, I think the quality is just the same as the previous one, because it is the same resolution, as, but as you can tell, the angles and the distance you have to be varies. But with the macro lens, it definitely solves that issue. But one thing to keep in mind is this one costs more. So I don't see the value of paying more for this one when, when the compact does the exact same thing and you don't even have to go up that far. So the XR, maybe it's a pass because you could just pay less for this one, get a macro lens, and then you have the same results. So now let's do the compact Pro. This is the more expensive one with no macro lens. So right now, it's just like the other one, it's very blurry, being real close. But as I move up, it's actually coming into focus a little bit. So you can definitely see the shape of the board here. Push power. I definitely see the heat spot, although it's super out of focus, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly it was shorted. And just like the last one, if I raise this up, now it's definitely in focus, but it's too far away to be useful. So it's kind of like the XR in that you have to be real far away to be in focus and really tell what's going on on the board. But let's pop in the macro lens. And of course we move closer because we do have a macro lens, which is meant for close up viewing. Okay, so now you can see the quality is much better as far as the resolution. You can clearly see all the components here on the motherboard. And if I turn this on, once again, we get the same, same result. You can still spot the same capacitor, but the resolution being better doesn't necessarily change the fact that we can still find the short. So at this point, I would say the Compact Pro is nice because you get the better quality image, but the Compact does the exact same thing as far as helping you find the short. So maybe it's not worth paying extra for the Compact Pro, but I think that's something you'd have to decide. It's just nice to have a higher resolution image, but for most people, what we're trying to do is just find the short, clear it, and fix the motherboard. Now, this is obviously for a VDD main short, which in most cases are super easy to spot with a thermal camera or free spray. Now, what I don't know is in a scenario where there's a small leak, like a 100 milliamp short, will the higher resolution Compact Pro help me find it when the regular Compact doesn't? I'm not sure. Unfortunately, I don't have a case like that here with me right now but that's something to think about when you're gonna choose a camera. So there you have it. It appears that the lower end compact is just as good as the compact pro in terms of finding a shorter component. So my question to you is based on this comparison, which one do you plan on getting? Let me know down below in the comments. Personally, I already bought the compact pro and we'll just keep using it. But from now on, I will definitely be suggesting to people that the regular compact is a lower cost alternative. For those who don't mind spending the extra money for the higher resolution, just keep an eye out for the used section on Amazon. You might be able to find one at a very close price to the regular compact one. Also, there are other thermal camera brands out there. I've been told that there's the Infrared TS2 Plus, which has a built-in macro lens for about 350, although it is for Android only and it comes with the USB-C port. So let me know if you want me to make a video on that one down below in the comments. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next week.